Okay, so this one might get just a little bit spicy. What can I say? These are spicy boys. Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com and today we're going to talk all about Grados. Now, Grado is a brand that's always had a bit of a cult following for their headphones. They've got that kind of retro, no-nonsense, made in Brooklyn, bare bones kind of vibe going on. And this seems to appeal to a certain crowd. Like there are people who really love Grados. And you also see them regularly at the top of best of or top 10 lists on various websites online. So in today's video, I have with me three Grado headphones to take a look at. The SR80X, the SR125X, and SR225X. And I know there's also the 325X Hemp and a whole bunch of other models. We've actually reviewed some of them. Uh, that'll be linked in the description. But I also think it's important to note that what I'm about to describe in this video does not apply to all Grado headphones across the board. Just the ones that are kind of like these. And these will do a good job of exemplifying the pros and cons of many of them, since there's also kind of a similarity or familiarity for a number of aspects, you know, among their models. And I'm just going to provide some spice here right away and say that in my view, there are enough cons to where I personally wouldn't choose them over other headphones. But hey, you might. Who am I to judge? Okay, that's literally my job. But I'm not judging you for liking them if you do. Okay, maybe just like a little bit. Please don't hate me. But let's dive in and begin by talking about the type of headphones that Grados tend to be. These are, of course, dynamic driver moving coil headphones that generally have low impedance and high sensitivity, making them easy to drive from a wide range of equipment. Uh, I've, of course, been running them off of the Bioelectric HPA V550 and the Matrix x Pro. Uh, that's some fairly high-end equipment, but, you know, they don't need that equipment, right? You don't need an amplifier to, to run these. Uh, they'll run just fine off of just about anything. For building comfort, let's talk about that. Grados are some of the few high-end headphones or audiophile targeted headphones that are truly ultralight. Like these things weigh hardly anything at all. And that's in part because the construction doesn't really even include a cup here. There's just sort of this small enclosure piece that the drivers are built into and then a foam style pad like this. Um, and the pads are of a particular interest for a number of reasons. But basically, that's it. The top headband is also super plain. Uh, you get these plastic pieces for the arms and then a metal rod that sort of attaches to the yokes here. Uh, and that's it. Just one thing to note, with the SR225X, you can see that the pad is open in the middle, which is different compared to the other two. Uh, and this one doesn't cover the driver here. Instead, it goes along the outside. And this is also similar to you know a number of their other models, like for example, with the Hemp and I believe the 325X as well. Now, the driver housing is made out of a variety of materials, depending on which model you have. Uh, on this one, it is sort of a sturdy feeling plastic material, but I've also seen some other ones made out of wood or just different materials in general. But I have to say that the overall presentation of these headphones is that they feel cheap. They may hold up over time, but they feel cheap. And none of these are exactly comfortable out of the box because for some ungodly reason, they're designed to be on ear rather than over ear, which means that when you put them on, they crush your ears into the side of your head, just, just like this. And if you know me and my preferences, I'm generally not a fan of having my ears crushed into the side of my head. It doesn't feel great to me. Now, of course, if you are an on ear headphone enthusiast and you love the way these feel, I'm sorry, but on ear headphones are cursed. In any case, I also find that with the SR225, the style of pad here is a particularly rough feeling material, which makes it all the more uncomfortable. Now, once again, if you enjoy the way that this feels, yell at me in the comments. Grados also tend to be popular in modding communities because the pads, they just slip off like this, right? It's the simplest method of taking pads off and putting pads on. And this gives, you know, really easy access to the driver uh, because of this sort of design. Uh, pad swaps in particular can also dramatically improve the comfort simply by swapping to the wonderfully named Geekria pads here. Geekria is like the best name for anything ever. Like, I'm pretty sure Geekria is like, what I'm doing right now. But the point is swapping to aftermarket pads like these ones, convert them from on-ear torture devices like this to extremely comfortable all-day headphones that you hardly even notice are there because they're so lightweight. At that point, the only annoyance is the non-removable cable. And speaking of the cable, look at how crazy thick and stiff this feels. Like, Jesus Christ, is this thing ever heavy and stiff. 
but at least it feels sturdily attached, so that's good. Now, when it comes to the sound quality, I imagine some of the Grado mods out there are super interesting, and doing pad swaps does affect the sound, although not always for the better. But when it comes to the default product that you get out of the box, these things, there are definitely some issues to be aware of. Now let's take a look at the frequency response to get a sense of the sound uh, done on the BNK5128. And this is again where I have to stress that what I'm showing you guys here is the general trends that Grado headphones tend to have because there are differences for how they sound depending on which model it is that you're talking about. But for these three and you know a number of other different models, there is that sort of similarity in terms of their sound signature as well. Now, looking at how the Grado's measure here, you can see that it's pretty rough in the treble. Like, it's quite peaky, but it's actually a little bit more complicated than it looks. And let's start with the bass. This is one of the downsides with a design like this, where you're bound to lose any and all sub bass. And while sub bass roll off isn't really uncommon with open back headphones, with Grado's, the roll off tends to happen fairly high up. And to compensate for this issue, some of these models, in particular the SR220, 25X and a number of others, like I believe the hemp as well, uh, they have increased presence in the mid bass, and it almost makes them actually kind of V-shaped uh, for the sound signature. If you discount the fact that you know the sub bass information is basically gone, and for those who aren't familiar. Sub bass doesn't really contain that much musical information. Most of it is a bit higher than that. And that's why I say for some of these models, they can actually be subjectively perceived as being a little bit more on the V-shaped side of things. But it's really the upper mids and treble where the most significant issues lie with these headphones. And you can see there are some differences among these models and they don't all measure the same as I mentioned, but one consistent feature is these strong treble peaks. And you can see there's always this sort of consistent one that's around 2K as well. Now, what does this sound like? Well, in the best case, they have an extra sense of crispness to the sound, with certain treble harmonics being elevated above the rest. And to some people, this sounds good. Not me, but to some people. <laughs> and I think a charitable description of the treble here would be to say it's got a lively kind of character to it. And the thing is, there are definitely some recordings where even for me, these treble peaks don't come across as fatiguing, or at least not nearly as fatiguing as they look. Like I was actually listening to some acoustic and instrumental recordings from Ting Valtrio and Michael Walney, uh, and those tracks actually sounded mostly okay, just a little bit extra crisp, like I mentioned. But it was when I was listening to a wider range of music, specifically stuff with vocals, things tended to come across with this almost timbrally skewed kind of character. You know, for certain recordings, that peakiness tends to become more distinct and more recognizably unpleasant. Like sometimes things can even sound a little bit honky. So I think the best way I can describe these is that they don't sound like they lack resolution and they certainly don't sound dull or blunted in any way. They just sound slightly off for these regions. And for recognizable tones like vocals, they just sound a bit wonky and shrill due to those strong upper mid and treble peaks. And of course, you could say that those are just bad recordings, but other headphones tend to do just fine with those. And the more headphones you hear that are more normal for their sound signature, the more you notice these quirks on the Grados. At least that's what I've found. Now that's most of the negative stuff here. It's to do with you know the build, the comfort, and the sound. But that's also not the whole story when it comes to the Grados. And as I mentioned, a lot of the fandom comes from Grado mods that people are doing. And they're being modded in part because people enjoy the driver's performance and they want to harness its power. But it's also because it's far easier to do on Grados than it is on other headphones. You don't have to take the cup apart because there really is no cup. And I think it's because of this that Grados are often considered to be more like just a baseline or a starting point you know, a driver with a housing and a headband. I mean, that's literally all that this is. I suppose that's what most headphones are. But again, the fact that the cup isn't there is kind of a big deal. Now, these mods range all the way from basic pad swaps all the way to complete structural overhauls. And unfortunately, it can be difficult to tell if those mods are actually going to be any good. And this is because you usually have to rely purely on subjective reports for them. And that's not to say that these reports aren't valid. It's just that for a lot of them, measurements don't exist. So you can't be 100% sure of what you're going to get by doing the mod. But in my opinion, this is the best thing about Grados. It's what people are doing with them. And maybe this is something we can do in the future. Like maybe we can check out one of those mods and then do the mod and then measure it 
to get a better sense of how they sound, if they improve, in what ways they improve, and so on. I will say, while the Geek Rhea pads here do improve the comfort a lot, they also change the sound, and it isn't necessarily for the better. Like, the general trend when you use these pads on the Grado headphones is that it kind of kills that 2 kilohertz resonance, uh, but then it also boosts the mid-treble, making it extra sibilant. So yeah, if you're bothered by the 2K resonance, then this will help, but I think it's sort of at the cost of a little bit of, you know, extra treble spice and fatigue. But this is also just an example of how doing a simple pad swap can significantly change the sound. And I imagine there are all kinds of other pads that you could try with these as well. So what's the takeaway here? How should we think about Grados? Well, in my view, unless you have a specific preference for retro looking bright or peaky sounding on your headphones, it's not really worth considering Grados over other headphones without specifically intending to mod them. Now, does that make them bad? Well, yes, for those of us not looking for that kind of headphone experience. Certainly they are not for me and I don't recommend them. But maybe a better way to look at Grados, especially these ones, is it's kind of like a niche within a niche. Apart from being something for folks who like brighter headphones, I think of them kind of more like a platform to begin modding or getting into DIY stuff with. And for those who are curious about this, those communities might be worth kind of diving into. Of course, it's also probably not the cheapest way you can do this. Uh, you can actually buy off the shelf drivers on their own for far less, uh, but then you also don't get the the functional sort of structure of a headphone uh, to turn them into you know, headphones. So you have to figure that out as well. Um, and you also have no idea how those are gonna sound either. But regardless, that's not really something I'm gonna advocate for either way. Really, I just wanna leave you with the takeaway that if you're considering Grados, also consider getting into those modding communities because I think that's really where the most fun is had with these types of headphones. And that's gonna do it for this video. As usual, check out the forum in the links below, as well as the audio files up on headphones.com if you wanna see all of our written material that we've done. Uh, and then join us on Discord if you wanna chat with me, if you wanna tell me that I'm wrong about all of this stuff and that you love Grados, that's the place to do it. Um, but until next time, I will see you guys later.